you worked with with people and how you structured that? Sure. Um, so I go to a place and we try to take about an hour. It generally takes a little bit more because um, recruiting people is always the major issue. Um, so once I have someone and they're willing to, to kind of be filmed to be part of the project, um, I just have a little chat to them really and, and I find out a little bit about them and I'll ask them directly about dance and if they had an imaginary dancer, what would they have the imaginary dancer do? It's a kind of fantasy way of engaging with them. But very often people don't feel like they... Everybody knows about dance, but some people feel that they don't know a lot about dance. So actually, I would then ask questions that related to their day, what they've been doing, and I had kind of set questions that essentially would feed back, feed to them, and then feed back to me. So it might be something specific, like, can you give me three body parts? And then they would give me three body parts, and I would do something with those body parts. Or do you have any hobbies, or what kind of things do you like to do, or how are you feeling? So in as many different ways as I can to kind of talk to them. Um, and get information that is, I guess, choreographically useful. So I kind of want uh, like actions or gestures. Or Sometimes people are really articulate with their hands and I'll steal their gestures as they're kind of explaining something. Something cool that I did was to get someone to describe their house. So they'd be like, yeah, I have two, two, two floors and there's a downstairs and an upstairs. So then I end up with this movement that becomes <laughs> something. Um, but I didn't do that too much because people get a bit conscious and go, oh my god, do I really do that? <laughs> so, it's a bit weird. Um, so basically, yeah, so each session is 10 minutes with um, either one or two people because people feel more comfortable to do it in pairs. And then wherever I get to choreographically with that first block, then I pick up from the next block. So the hour works as a relay. So mostly for my brain, it constructs itself as we go along. Um, I've then got 10 minutes to raise everything together and then I perform it in the location um, wherever we are. So it might be the middle of Camden Market, it might be in Chinatown, it could be on stage at Settlers Wells in the audience making the requests. The aim, I guess, is to make contemporary dance less scary by involving people in the creative process. Because I think a lot of people can look at contemporary dance and think it's a little bit scary. And I kind of don't blame them sometimes. So if they feel they've contributed to the making, then they watch it and they go, ah, oh, I get it because I know how it was made. And then they can hopefully share it with their friends. And, and I guess the aim is that if, if someone goes to the theatre or someone takes a dance class after kind of having this experience, even though it's really, really short, then my job's done. I'm trying to just get new audiences for contemporary dance. Really. I feel like being a contemporary dance missionary. It's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is an absolutely fantastic and hugely important thing. But I also think personally that what you're doing goes beyond that. And when I was watching you, I thought it's this wonderful uh, sort of um, um, bringing to, to life of the, the, the generosity of uh, performance and also sort of art making in general because it's so clear that that what you're what you're saying is that this is for you this is this is from you this is for you and that that generosity is something I don't know about other people but that was a really strong um, part of it. 